thank you, Jonathan, for joining this edition of Caspio Customer Pulse. Um, I'm sure the attendees are going to find your story really interesting. So let's dive in. Um, so tell me a little bit about yourself and your company. First of all, thank, thanks for having me. I truly appreciate it. Uh, name's Jonathan Parham. I'm a, uh, I've been in law enforcement for about 30 years. Uh, the company that, that I uh, am the CEO of is called 360 AOR, Area of Responsibility. Uh, and it's basically designed to help police officers improve police performance. I've uh, been working in providing law enforcement training and consulting and other services for law enforcement agencies for about 15 years now. Uh, and that's where I've come, uh, come to the point where I've developed a software for law enforcement, which is why I'm here uh, with you this afternoon. No, that's great, Jonathan. It's been really interesting to find out how did you find low code? What kind of drove you to that and what sort of problems were you looking to solve? I was a chief of police in a law enforcement agency a few years ago. One of the things that I was required to establish was a body camera program. Uh, I was a little skeptical about it because I knew that when we forget, when we would begin to look at body camera footage, we were probably going to see some things that we didn't want to see, uh, maybe because our training wasn't what we could have been or even our super supervision. Uh, so I was a little concerned. Uh, so one day I decided to uh, take a look at some of the video that were out there and uh, supervis one supervisor sent me a video of a pursuit. In that pursuit was some actions by police officers that did not match the way that uh, I felt they, they should have matched or our training. Uh, I brought the officers in and, you know, as we're having a sort of a heated discussion, I asked them, hey, what, what were you thinking? Uh, these officers looked at me kind of surprised and I, and I picked up on that and asked them again, okay, well, what were you thinking? And they explained to me, Hey, listen, this is the way we always do it. I don't, I don't know why you're surprised. At that moment, I recognized that what we taught officers and the resources that we, su we supplied them to get the job done, uh, we never really made sure that they were doing it the way that we expected them to do it. We had body cameras, but we just weren't looking at them for anything other than maybe settling a complaint or saving some, some data for, for court. At that point, I started to look at why officers were responding to calls, what, what incident type, and then attach what I call key performance indicators or a list of things that they should be doing. It started out as a spreadsheet, and then throughout time, it turned into a Microsoft Access platform, something that I could work with. And then I was kind of stuck. Um, I was really trying to figure out, well, what do I do now? I can't maintain this database with Microsoft Access. It's not usable uh, with multiple agencies. And so I began looking for uh, for you know companies that would be able to assist me. Uh, I didn't know what to look for. I'm not a, a software person. And I just happened to go on the internet and I saw some advertisements for Caspio. No, it's great to hear. What um, what kind of drove you to Caspio with regards to making a decision to work with us? Was it something that you read that you thought would be kind of a good fit to you? Yes. Um, the, the idea of low code, no code was something that I thought was fantastic because I certainly didn't know what any of that meant. Uh, I knew that I wasn't a programmer or a developer or whatever the language is uh, and needed someone to kind of guide me through the things that I that I was doing. I'd already developed the shell in Microsoft Access. And, and one of the things that it really uh, was inviting to me is that you could transfer, transfer your Microsoft Access database into uh, Caspio and they would sort of build that framework for you. I thought, well, this is awesome. I've got a workable model here. Uh, it just isn't robust enough. I could just kind of, do a, 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 you know, sort of a click and drag is what my mindset was. Well, well while it wasn't that easy, it was certainly uh, extremely beneficial to work with Caspio to build, to transfer that software from uh, Microsoft Access to a workable web-based database. No, that's great to hear. And it's interesting. So I speak to a lot of customers in my portfolio whereby they don't have a technical background. So working with our professional services team and working with Caspio to develop and create their kind of vision really is is a lot of what customers come to us for really because like you said a lot of a lot of people don't have technical background to to really create something what they're really looking to achieve etc so it's it's great to have the expertise from our team to work closely with customers to to build um, these applications so tell us a little bit about your application um, and I know obviously you're still working with our professional services team kind of what does it do and who the end users are the the end user for this application is it is our law enforcement supervisors yeah. the idea is that there are hundreds of thousands of hours of body worn camera video that's never even looked at uh, and the the software is designed to take uh, to take a look at the video and allow it to be reviewed and compared to key performance indicators or best practices and stored in a database uh, the 
the supervisor would basically look at the video where, where it is. It does not drag the video into, into the software. They then bring up the, the form and fill it out. They compare what they see on the police officer video to the, the performance indicators that are in the software, and they basically fill out a form. Um, fill in, did the officer perform the actions the way that they were supposed to perform them? Yes or no. What are your next steps? And then it also collects demographics on the officer, their age, their race, their date of birth, uh, their gender, uh, the hours that they work, which allows us to pinpoint um, the problems that our officers are having to determine whether they are individual officer problems or agency problems. And what we've been able to discover using the software is police officer performance, while it seems problematic, is really not the problem. It is a result of the problem. Wow. Lack of training, lack of good support, yeah. uh, lack of clarity in how the the uh, agency wants the officer to to carry out their mission. So the software that I've developed uh, has those list of things that we want to see the officer do. So it becomes both descriptive, hey, here's what they're doing, and prescriptive, here's what we need to fix. Mm -hmm. And then we can track that over time. We can track yeah. it from month to month, from year to year, and see where the trends in officer error are, not to blame the officer, yeah. but to sort of do a root cause analysis and, it, and look back at the agency to see where we've fallen short of providing the resources that we need. Agencies love it, and it's been a tremendous hit, and I'm uh, really, really happy with uh, with the software and how it's developed, been developed so far. Oh, it's great, Jonathan. It's good to hear. And it, I was kind of just thinking while you were talking there, it's probably too early to kind of, I suppose, talk through any type of savings, whether it's hard dollar or it's um, efficiency savings. But from what I'm hearing is that it's definitely helping um, kind of the, the managers or the, um, the more senior police officers to see how their their people that are working for them are operating. It's kind of so I suspect it's really efficiency savings, really. Yes, as a matter of fact, it, it is, and, and and a whole lot more. You know, yeah. think of it this: way. supervisors are required to to uh, to know what their officers are doing to respond yeah. to to their their incidents, and also to correct them when they when they do things that aren't that are inconsistent with the best practices. Yeah. But most of the time, they don't see that. Uh, they're yeah. they're not able to get out on the road because they're so busy. There are so many officers and there are fewer supervisors now, one, because law enforcement is losing a lot of uh, leaders yeah. over the last few years with COVID and other issues. A lot of people have retired. Well, that that uh, effect shows up in supervision as well as the officer that's on the street. So now we have more officers, less supervisors and less re revision or review of what they're doing. Yeah. The other the other deal is that, you know, we don't want to wait until something bad happens. Uh, we, we take a look at the, uh, the calls that are not you know, shootings or stabbings or crazy calls because the way officers perform in one area, they're going to perform in another. So mm -hmm. if they're uh, practicing unsafe habits, then we're going to see that on the more mundane calls. Well, th when when they do that consistently and they do something that's that's dangerous, well, when it gets to a really critical call, it, it could be, you know, it could have catastrophic uh, results. This allows us to look at the trends and correct them while they're they're being done in something, uh, you know, of a more mundane call, mundane call that doesn't have a bad outcome yeah. so that we can allow the officer to see what's going on and correct their behavior. The last part that's really important is the communication. The, the supervisors now have an opportunity to sit down with their subordinate officers and say, hey, look at your screen. What do you see? Um, the the key performance indicators that are in the system have been shared with the officers. In other words, we're, we're saying to them, this is where, how we're going to review you, how we're going to judge you. Yeah. When those officers get that clarity, they do something amazing. They actually do it. Um, when when clarity, when the performance measures are clear, they do what they are expected to, to do the way they're expected to do it. But when they don't, it's usually because they don't understand, not because they're trying to be deviant or, or they, they just want to do something bad. So yeah. clarity, uh, the communication between the supervisor and the specific nature of how we want them to perform is really how we get the best out of our officers. No, it's interesting. And it's it's great to see how um, we're working with a customer and it's having such a positive impact in so many ways. Do you see it, this application being, and obviously everything you're doing around that, being rolled out to other police departments? Well, yes, we've uh, we've done pilots in the, the county that I'm in uh, and I've reached out. I've, I've uh, spoke to people in, in several other states and we're starting to get more uh, agencies on board. Uh, I've got about three or four separate states that are that have ha that have officers or agencies involved in the system now. Mm -hmm. The goal is obviously to get it nationwide so that it, we can have a clear understanding of the the, uh, the performance measures for performance and a clear and comprehensive review process that we can track 
over the course of time. We can yeah. track an officer from the time they create a video to when the supervisor reviews it, to when corrective measures are done, to a separate point to see if that performance has improved, sustained, fallen off, or, or whatever. Or if we need to put them on a performance improvement plan uh, to ensure that, that there's greater clarity and there's documentation for the agency. So uh, it's it's been it's been a pretty big hit. It's just a matter now of, of getting it more, getting greater visibility with other agencies. No, I understand. So how's your experience been working with Caspio and obviously our experts in our professional services team? So I know you've been with us now just um, with April last year, you you um, signed up with us. So it'd be great to get some kind of feedback as to how have you found everything working with our teams? So it's it's been really great. Uh, the first thing is because I, I I'll just be very blunt. I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to to the software. The, yeah. the team has been fantastic, not just with their knowledge, but really with their their level of communication. Very friendly, very open, very inviting. Um, to, to the point where I mean, we're getting I'm getting emails from them one or two o'clock in the morning. The things that I'm panicking about and they're and they're putting my mind at rest. But I think the most important thing is they're telling me or they've told and they continue to tell me. The things that I don't know and wouldn't even know to expect. Hey, you know, when when you do this, you have to also do these other things. Um, uh, and and because I'm not a developer and I've never built a software before, I don't know that. And and I I count on them to be a partner with me to build out this software. And they've been fantastic. Things that I would never ever think of. It is you know it's just intuitive to them because that's what they do. And the way that they interact has just been great. If I forget something or if I if I have a correction or the things go sideways and, and I haven't thought of something, uh, there's it's it's almost like we're partners yeah. uh, in the process. And that's the level of comfort and comfortability that I have with them that uh, I know they're going to look out for for me personally. And I feel like like we're in this together. No, it's great to hear that. And um I get the same feedback from a lot of our customers that work very close with our professional services team, especially the ones that are not technically minded. Um, it's like they're in safe hands. That's kind of the kind of the, the consistent message I get from a lot of customers. They feel safe that they're being looked after um, by experts that really do know the industry as well. But kind of, I suppose, touching on that really is if somebody's watching this and they don't have an experience with low code and no code, what advice would you have um, for them? You know, I, I tell them to do as much as they could uh, beforehand to know where, where they want their software to be. You know, what, what's the job to be done? That's number one. What is it that you want this thing to do? Uh, and, and then sit down with, uh, with, with the representative from Caspio and, and get their opinion, get their advice on, on you know, how they think it should go. The, it, it's one thing to, to be a creator and kind of be married to your process and to, to your creation. But it's more important once you have a core idea to to put that in front of people who know how to do this. Um, the, the the team has been fantastic in sharing um, some of the things that they've done with other uh, companies, not not specifically by name, but by, but by saying, hey, here's a process that we did with them. This worked well. This one didn't work so well. This may work for you. There are multiple ideas that have been shared. Uh, I mean, I've, I've gotten multiple emails that say, hey, here are three or four ways we could do this. Which one would you like? Uh, yeah. Which one suits your company best? Uh, so instead of just me, them asking me a question, me giving an answer, uh, and then them coming back with something, it's really a participative process in how to, and how we've developed the software. No, it's good to hear. And I suppose really the last question from me is really around how do you see the future? Because I know we're obviously in conversations right now about looking at expanding our relationship, looking at different things as well, how we can work closer together. How do you see working with Caspio is going to work for you over the next, say, 12 months and beyond there? Yeah, listen, I don't plan on going anywhere. Um, you know, the more... Uh the more visibility my software has with, with the market, uh, and that's the police departments, the more uh, suggestions that I have from the uh, from the agencies and where they say, hey, can it, can it do this? Or can we change to do that? Can we add mapping? Can all those other things that that are added into it? Right now, it's a minimum viable product. It's, it's, it works great, and it provides the, the basic concept for, for what it needs now. But the, the bigger it gets and the more exposure it gets, and we're going to need to expand it for, to match some of the, the needs and requests from, from the market. Well, we already talked about that with the team and, and their response is, OK, when those things come up, let's start talking about them. Let's put them on a whiteboard. Let's see. Let's prioritize them. You know, it, it's it's great because it's it's like I have a team working with me uh, that helps me take the ideas that I'm getting from the from the end user and turn them into something that, that actually works the way that they want it to. You know, with minimal amount of buttons to push, making it very clean. Uh, and, and that's probably been the biggest compliment is that when people go into the software, they say, 
you know, it's intuitive. It's easy. We don't we don't really need a user manual. We just know to start pressing these buttons and, and everything works the way it's supposed to. So for police officers who, who are you know in a rush to do things and get back out on the street and, and go protect and serve, that's a tremendous uh, uh, feature that, that we really uh, I hadn't anticipated, but I'm really glad we have. No, that's great. Um, Jonathan, thank you for being a Caspio customer. We really appreciate your business. And what I'll also do as well is put a link into the article um, that you have um, wrote into the um, into the actual webinar as well. So people can have a read about it. I think it's really interesting. I think it's very intuitive. And um, it kind of talks about what you're doing at Body Warm Pro and how the application is helping you uh, be successful as well. So I'll put that link into, into the webinar for everybody that's joining this call today. Thank so you. thank you for your time, Jonathan. I really appreciate it. And we'll talk again soon. Thank you, sir.